Hey everybody, I'm Sarah. Welcome back to Overkill Reviews, Banger's weekly heavy metal review show. I am back after a long minute. Uh, I've been super busy. My band Smolder, uh, we're opening for Pagan Altar and uh, Blood Ceremony in Koshmar in Toronto in August at Lee's Palace, which is super exciting. I've been spending lots of time outside going on canoe portage trips at Algonquin Park, long distance biking trips, that kind of stuff, because it's summer and in Canada, when we have summer, we need to take advantage of it because uh, our winters are very long and cold. All of that aside, make sure to hit us up on Patreon and subscribe. Let's get to the review. This week we are looking at perhaps the most controversial metal release of the year. This band is one that people in the underground tend to hate and say that anyone who listens to them is a poser. Wah, wah, wah. And uh, the other half of people in metal seem to hate one version of this band so much that the comments have been disabled on their YouTube videos. Big yike! It's the brand new album by Batushka. It's titled Hop Soddy and it is out today via Metal Blade Records. But wait, isn't there another related album that we should probably be talking about? Yes, there definitely is. That album is by former Batushka member Kristoff. It is called Pa Ni Hi Da. It came out May 26th via Bandcamp. Okay, so for the uninitiated, what the hell is all this about? Batushka formed in 2015 and they released their first 7-inch and then their full-length Liturgia later that year. Signed to Witching Hour Production, the band merged Eastern Orthodox traditions with black metal and their music features this really hypnotic chanting alongside melodic atmospheric black metal with ample shrieking vocals. The band very quickly exploded and started appearing on massive festival lineups all over the world complete with this show that is just breathtaking to watch. Uh, many on the Banger crew have seen it. I'm sure many of you have as well. Basically, they bring church pews, candles, incense, all sorts of stuff that's going on. It's pretty visually stimulating. Now, I'm bringing this up because it's kind of important. The first album that was released is not without controversy. What was that controversy, you ask? According to the internet, read the Nuclear War Now forums, Basically, a bunch of the orders for the, uh, the original album were horked. They didn't show up. They showed up super late. Uh, there's people who have told me that their special edition box set showed up with garbage. It's really hard to actually verify what all the rumors are about this band, but I definitely recommend that if you want to dig into that trash pile that you go to the link in our bio that, that is there for this exact reason. And of course, with controversy came more controversy. Essentially, Batushka was signed to Metal Blade, and eventually it became very clear that the members of the band were fighting for control of the band and essentially two of the members each claimed that uh, they had kicked the other one out. So if you want a blow-by-blow -blow commentary of how this all played out, I also recommend that you look at the link in the bio because uh, there's a YouTube documentary called The Fable of Two Batushkas and if you turn on the um, subtitles, you'll have some maximum laughs. I will give you a cliff notes of that issue. Basically, the multi-instrumentalist and primary songwriter Kristoff got into a dispute with vocalist Bart, who owns Witching Hour Productions, which is the label who released the debut. Then, after a lot of back and forth and media, social media accounts being taken over and all this other nonsense, it emerged that there was two versions of the band. There was Kristoff, there was Bart, and the Bart version was the one that was signed to Metal Blade and Kristoff was not. Then the race was on to see who could release music first. And before Bart and his version of the band could release an album, Kristoff surprise dropped an album via Bandcamp on May 26th. So where does that leave us? We now have two albums by two bands that used to be one band. Are they both good? Are they worthy of listening? Are they worthy of purchase? Let's find out. Now for this review, we're gonna talk about these two albums as if the bullshit does not exist. First up, we're gonna talk about Hapsadi. 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 
while it does not have the consistent quality at the level of Litter jo Joya, Goya, I'm really sorry, I am probably screwing that up so bad, I'm really awful with the Russian and Polish translations. <laughs> Anyways, there are some glowing moments to this record. There's more of a verse chorus, kind of traditional songwriting feel to the album, as well as a bit of a transition away from the liturgical feel of the record. As the band describes it in their press release, the whole album is a concept based on the liturgy of death, the prayers of the dead, and the orthodox funeral rites and dirges, dot, dot, dot. It's all about a ritual that involves the dead and the mourners. We used a lot of old folk songs and elegies from our homeland. These are sung during the wake around the casket in the deceased person's home. So that accounts for some of the unusual moments of the album that people actually did start to complain about in the YouTube comments before those videos or before those comments were disabled. But that's not the best part. For me, the best part is track three, which is Wizard -ne Oh, I'm so sorry. W I E C Z E. R N I A. That is the best song in the album. It is the third song in the album. There's this huge, massive, melodic, swelling sections where the Orthodox chants are just beautiful. It really gets to the point where I feel like it is comparable to the first album and it wouldn't have been out of place on the first album. And uh, later on, there's another track called S Z E S T O J, second word, C Z A S. That track is really beautiful. I know that that's not necessarily a word that a lot of people use when they talk about black metal. It's something that I, I personally do use a lot when I talk about black metal, but it's because there's these tremolo picking segments that sound so eerie and cold and everything gets into these swelling segments once more where it's just beautiful and it sounds like atmospheric black metal at its best. And the production on this album, it sounds really good all together and the mix on this entire album is great. Next up, we're gonna talk about Kristoff's album, which is Pani Hida. This album is very somber, it's very consistent. Uh, it feels quite downtrodden compared to the more jubilant nature of Little Joya. Uh, it's certainly the heaviest of all these three albums that we are talking about. And the songwriting, again, quite consistent. We are hearing a strong example of atmospheric black metal, but on this example, it really feels like the atmosphere is dialed back and the viciousness and the ugliness of black metal is dialed up. And I say this in particular because the production isn't as strong uh, as as the original Batushka or the first Batushka album. Not only that, but the vocals themselves are mixed in a bit of an unusual way. There's a lot of things that are kind of buried. In terms of the strongest songs, uh, song two is the clear highlight for me at least. Uh, it has this really slow, quiet, and lengthy interlude segment where you just hear these really sparse guitar notes that end with this very buried chanting underneath. Then it turns into this vicious black metal melee, and again, it feels like it could fit on the band's debut. Song four is another highlight. There's these very gruff, screamed, growled vocals that are layered in a really dense way. And uh, there's also, again, tremolo riffing. I talk about that. I really like the sound of that. It's just so cold, and it's so pretty and it's so ugly at the same time. And then finally, song seven, you've got more of, well, I would say you've got the heaviest song of the album. It's just like the black metal, like the, you know, pounding black metal song of the album. And if you look at this entire package, the song titles, the artwork, I feel like there's just more consistent with the debut. Okay, on to the worst parts. The dumpster fire story is the worst part of both of these releases. Of course, there's nitpicky things about both of these albums that make them weak. Hopsody lacks the consistent songwriting and quality and depth that made Batushka's debut feel so exciting. And there is a drag on the several last tracks. This album altogether just feels longer than it needs to be. Quite frankly, uh, it's also hard to enjoy something that emerges from these types of very well-publicized circumstances. That said, the phrase I always say, I do think that if this had come from any other band that was not called Batushka and it didn't have the associated baggage, that people would be much more receptive to this release and that they would probably be enjoying it. It's a good record, but it sounds rushed. Uh, the production isn't great, the songwriting is definitely there, and I listened to it several times back to back with the debut just to kind of, you know, make sure that all of the comments that I saw swirling online about it obviously being superior were accurate, and uh, I didn't really come to the same conclusion. Yes, it's a good record, uh, but it definitely feels way more black metal. It has way less of the atmosphere that made Batusha's debut feel so exciting, and uh, 
the circumstances that birthed it, it, it makes sense that it feels and sounds kind of rushed because obviously Christoph wanted to be the first version of the band to release the uh, an album. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's a better album. It's hard to be succinct in this review, um, just because I really liked Spatushka's debut a lot. I, I ordered it from, from Witching Hour uh, a couple years ago now. I've listened to it a good couple hundred of times. When I first got into it, it was around the same time that like Call to Fire was getting big, um, and it just felt really exciting to me. But with these new albums, I feel like there's problems with both of them, and I think that just because of all the drama and the ridiculousness that's surrounding these two versions of the band, it's hard to enjoy them in the same fashion. Not only that, but because you've got two separate members of the band going off in two different directions, like you can hear it in the music where their songwriting conflicts or where their sound conflicts were coming from that resulted in this schism. On Hapsadi, you're getting a, a member who I think is leaning more into, um, I don't want to say the gimmickry of Batushka, but it is a gimmick. Like, and gimmicks don't have to be a bad thing. Being like, oh yeah, we're going to follow along this trajectory and we want to make sure that we include this thing that made the band iconic. The production is really good, but uh, the songwriting kind of ends up ultimately lacking. And then on Panihida, and I'm sorry, I'm trying to make sure I say that right every single time, it sounds great. There's a lot of outright viciousness, but um, it feels almost negatively exacerbated by the production and uh, the often buried layering of the vocals ends up meaning that the thing that made Batushka so exciting uh, ultimately is uh, not there enough. So I've seen multiple fans and magazines saying Hapsadi can't hold a candle to Kristoff's version of the band and I don't think that's necessarily true. Uh, instead, what I'm hearing as a fan of Batushka is um, two bands making an album that one band should have made. So where does that leave us? Truth be told, I don't find either of these albums um, particularly exciting. I don't think that they kind of live up to the promise of Batushka's uh, debut. I think that um, they're both interesting, but they both have problems. For all those reasons, I'm giving Hapsadi three skulls out of five, and I'm giving Panihida 3.5 skulls out of five, here on Overkill Reviews. Aside from that whole ridiculous thing, there's several great releases that are out today or already out that I wanted to highlight. The first one is the brand new studio album by Dream Troll. That album is called Second to None and it's out today independently. Get it on Bandcamp. Other than that, I really wanted to highlight a fantastic Mexican death metal band that I recently found. They have a brand new album that's called Infernal Metallum Mortis. The band is Infernal Conjuration, and uh, it was released via Iron Bonehead, and you can get that one on Bandcamp as well. Enjoy! Oh, yeah.